The next reaction that we're going to look at is called the stark enamine synthesis, and it is a conjugate addition reaction, and it is really just a derivative of the Michael addition reaction. It's not anything completely unique. Uh, what makes the stark enamine synthesis different from a regular Michael addition reaction is that it gives us a way to use a regular aldehyde or ketone as a Michael donor. And that's, um, that's kind of a tricky way for me to say that because we really don't use an aldehyde or ketone as a Michael donor. Let's look back at the Michael addition reaction. Michael donors are enolates of some sort of carbonyl compound. None of them are enolates of aldehydes or ketones. The enolates of aldehydes and ketones are very strong nucleophiles. And as you know, the enolates of aldehydes and ketones attack the carbonyl carbon directly. They don't do any work out here at the beta position. They're way too strong of a nucleophile for that. They go here and they do the aldol reaction instead. So the enolate of an aldehyde or ketone could never be used in a Michael addition reaction. It, it is used in the aldol condensation. What we have, um, but what we do have the ability to do is take an aldehyde or a ketone, regular meaning you don't have to have a nitrile group on it, regular aldehyde or ketone, convert it into an enamine, as the name suggests, take the enolate of the enamine, which is a very weak nucleophile, and the enolate of the enamine will attack at the beta site and do the Michael addition reaction. So the reaction, the stark enamine synthesis, is going to look something like this. We're going to take a regular aldehyde or ketone, like acetone. We are going to convert it into an enamine. Go back to chapter 20, if that's really unfamiliar to you. Convert it into an enamine. And in the process of converting it into an enamine, it just kind of naturally turns itself into an enolate. We'll see that in the mechanism. And then do the Michael addition reaction with some sort of Michael acceptor. I'm just choosing this guy for the Michael acceptor. Step two of the Michael addition reaction is H3O plus, as you know. The H3O plus serves to protonate the product of the Michael addition reaction, it also is used to convert an enamine back into an aldehyde or ketone. So it takes the nitrogen off and we end up with a product that looks like this. There's the Michael acceptor with its double bond gone and here is the acetone that we added to it. And just in case you're getting lost with carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's that. Again, here, converting to an enamine, it turns itself into an enolate, Michael addition, finish the Michael addition, slash, turn the enamine back into the aldehyde or ketone. Let's take a look at the mechanism to see how this works. Now I'm not going to show the whole mechanism for the enamine conversion because we've already covered that mechanism and maybe you forgot it and that's okay. Just go back to chapter 20 and look it up again. I'm going to be using this methyl amine. It doesn't matter, like I said, it doesn't matter what the R groups are on that amine because they're just going to end up coming off anyways. So this is going to be converted into the enamine, which initially looks like this, the positive formal charge on the nitrogen, and the enamine will convert itself into a more stable compound without the formal charge on the nitrogen. Like that. And it is important for us to remember or, or sort of sketch out the structure of the enamine that we're working with. We'll talk about why um, in a second in one of the examples. 
this enamine converts itself into an enolate like that. Bring that lone pair of electrons down uh, to reform the carbon-nitrogen double bond. And there's our enolate. And you may ask yourself, why would it even do that? It does that so that it can do the next step, which is reacting with the Michael acceptor. I'm going to use this, this Michael acceptor again. And this will attack at the beta site because it's a weak nucleophile. And we'll shift our electrons around just like we do in the Michael addition reaction. So we have our, I am, who I'm, I'm going to try really hard to not lose any carbons here. There's the part of it that was the Michael acceptor. And we formed a new bond right here. It bonded to this carbon. So this carbon is now this guy. That carbon has an ethyl group on it. And it has another ethyl group that has a double bond to our nitrogen. Let's number up our carbons. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three is the point of attachment. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think I screwed anything up. Positive charge on the nitrogen, don't forget that. We hydrolyze and protonate all at the same time with H3O+. So the H3O plus is going to be protonating the OH group. And the H3O plus is also going to be converting the enamine back into a carbonyl compound. And if you forgot that conversion, that's in the enamine mechanism in chapter 20. So there it is. And I'm going to, oh no, I'm going to leave it. I was going to try to redraw this to make it better looking, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose a carbon if I do that. So I'm not going to press my luck. That's our product. That's it. Let's look at a couple of examples. So we're going to use cyclohexanone and we're going to use again dimethylamine. It doesn't really matter because it's going away anyways. And we'll use uh, another uh, cyclic cyclohexenone step 3 acid. So let's start by taking the Michael donor and you know what I, I really want to do is um, I really want to write it in this direction so there's our Michael donor we're going to start by removing its double bond we're not showing its double bond and we're going to be attaching the aldehyde or ketone at the beta position this is the beta position this is the point of attachment and the aldehyde or ketone is going to be attached at its alpha site. So this spot right here is the new point of attachment. And I think everything is in the right spot looks fine. Let's do one more example. It can be really easy to put the wrong, put things together in the wrong place. So you gotta take your time to look really carefully at your products and make sure that you're attaching the right carbons to each other. So 
the example that we did above was with a symmetrical aldehyde or ketone. And in a symmetrical aldehyde or ketone, we don't have to really think that much about what we're doing. We're just going to find the alpha carbon and attach it to the beta carbon and call it good. Here we have an asymmetrical one, so this is going to require us to think a little bit more. I'm going to start by drawing the Michael acceptor, not showing its double bond. We are going to be attaching something to the beta position, which is right there. And then what we want to do, so it's the beta site that's getting attached right there. What we want to do is attach our aldehyde or ketone from or at one of the alpha positions. And here we have two different alpha positions and they're not symmetrical. This isn't symmetrical. So we have to think about which one is most likely to be doing the attaching. It is going to be the most substituted side. And the reason for that is the enamine at some point has a carbon-carbon double bond in it, as you know. And it's going to favor the formation of the most substituted carbon-carbon double bond. So when it makes the enamine and it makes a double bond, it's going to put it here as opposed to putting it here because that is more stable. So there's our product. And that is the stork enamine synthesis.